Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This is the 68 RFE. In a recent video, we shared what it takes to get this transmission torn apart. This video, however, is all about the inspection. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so we're gonna show you a little inspection on our RFE here. We'll start with the pump itself. Uh, get this thing split apart. I'll show you a couple things to look for. You've got two different sizes of Torx bolts on this pump. And what you gotta do is get these larger Torx. I do anyway first. And that will allow the stator support to come out of the pump. Usually not an issue on this trans as far as wear or anything, but we would check ceiling ring grooves and so forth here, bushing surface, the bore down in here where our ceiling rings ride, all the usual stuff there. To split the actual pump half itself, we gotta flip it over and take out all of these little torques here. And fast forward to this part. Okay. Now, you should be able to just find a spot here to kind of lightly pry up on that. Split our pump halves. Um, there are some issues you need to be aware of and research for the lockup valve train, the pressure regulator valve train, just like so many of the later model valve bodies, highly active valves. They do create a lot of wear on the valve and the bore itself. Uh, options there are aftermarket drop-in replacement valves, uh, some of the shift kits, if you will. And then uh, the other option, which I have gone to in some cases, is buying a remanufactured or rebuilt pump where they've already done or addressed the common issues on this pump. Uh, heat and warpage can be a problem on this trans for pump halves to warp from excessive heat, as well as in the valve body, and I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that. So we've got a couple more little Torx bolts here. Little shorties, do not leave these out. That can create an issue on this trans. A lot of guys can forget, will forget those. We've got a pump plate or a wear plate here and this side here we need to inspect because that rides down against our gears that are rotating down here in the pump body itself. So we'll want to do a real good inspection on that plate and check for wear in this area where those gears, like I said, are riding. This one doesn't look too bad. Light scratches is fine. This is a little different pump on the uh, RFE than a lot of other units where they've got the main drive gear here, which is not that unusual, <clears throat> but it's driving two other little idler gears, if you will, here. Okay. And what they're doing is they're trying to actually make this thing more efficient. And they use this little flapper valve right here. That's all it is, just a little, literally a piece of metal in there. And that little flapper valve along with a combination of these gears allows this gear to work supposedly more efficient where it's using less horsepower at a lower RPM, but yet maintaining enough pressure. And then it can, it can be turned on or off, if you will, through this little, little flapper valve. Um, it's, a, it's a good pump setup. Um, once again, the gears can be an issue. This does not have a conventional pump bushing that we would see in so many pumps. This bore right here, normally you would have a bushing that would help support your converter hub and or gear. This does not use a bushing. So if we have wear in this area for this surface or in this bore or in the cavities or bores that these gears ride in here, 
then we've just got to replace the entire pump. It's not an option as far as really rebuilding it ourselves. Or, like I said, you can get one from the uh, from the aftermarket or a brand new Chrysler pump. So we'd inspect the pocket, both those gears where they ride down in there. Like I said, the plate, the valve train, and so forth in there. The valve body to mention that while we've got it here, <clears throat> I would just universally replace this solenoid body itself. High wear item, electronic solenoids. You've got magnets in the solenoids, they attract metal. And just give you a good example of that. If Robert get a shot, right on the end of that solenoid body, if I'm pointing to the right area, is a solenoid for the governor pressure. And that thing is just super fuzzy with metal right there. That is all metal built up on the back of that. And the reason is, like I mentioned, all the solenoids use magnets, and that just attracts the metal, creates a wear issue. So that solenoid body, we would just simply replace. There's a lot of updates on this valve body. A lot of problems with plate breakage right here for these accumulators, the snaps and breaks. The aftermarket has plenty of different upgrades for that. Um, the pistons down inside here, can break. These look like they are the aluminum pistons, but some of the later ones went to plastic, and the plastic tends to break. So we would usually change those out for an aluminum piston. Also, this valve body is so long and stretched out across that case, it doesn't have a lot of support. There's only a few bolts holding it down. So with heat and wear and the torque, these valve bodies will tend to actually warp and twist and can become a real problem. Then you have leakage between the two halves. Aftermarket has billet channel castings now available. Uh, the simplest way to go in and fix some of the issue is with gaskets. They make a gasket to go in there where Chrysler did not use a gasket. Helps to seal it. Bare minimum, if you're building one of these units, you need to sand both surfaces of the channel itself once the unit is apart. That creates a little more flat, uniform surface for this thing to bolt back together with the new gaskets. But uh, a real issue, a real problem. There's very little going on in this valve body as far as valve train or things to deal with, but the warpage and the twisting of the valve body is a big, big problem. And like I said, once again there, bill it. You can spend all the money you want to spend on these things. Um, for as far as upgrades and so forth. Bare minimum, we're gonna build it, put some kind of a valve body kit in it, depending on the application. If this type of content is adding value, please let us know by hitting that like button. It does help the channel and we do greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, I mentioned before on this input drum, when we were trying to check our end play, and we could hear some movement, feel some movement. You can. Okay, that was not in play in the unit. That's simply the input shaft moving in and out of that drum. There's just a snap ring that holds that in place. So that's what we were hearing. The in play on the unit was very, very, very tight, but wanted to bring that up. Inspection on this drum itself, they do uh, suffer some wear in the snap ring groove areas that I mentioned, uh, we saw that broken snap ring. Uh, usually does not tear up the drum, but it, it, it will do some damage inside there. This would need to be taken apart, cleaned up, get all of the muck out of there, check the uh, snap ring grooves, make sure we have not damaged either one of these, these drums here. And uh, another item that we would want to replace is the pistons themselves. These are a bonded piston. The seals are bonded to the piston itself. They're not replaceable. So part of the overhaul kit, normally we would buy a set of bonded pistons, uh, not just for this drum, but throughout the trans as necessary. Always replace them. They can look good. They can feel good. They can even air check good, but the rubber on those tends to uh, shrink. So we don't shortcut that. Need parts and tools for your 68 RFE? Check out the resources section in the video description down below. Um, 
rest of the clutch drums, pretty much the same thing. We would take them apart, get all new clutches. There is a one-way clutch that needs to be serviced in here. So we would want to take that apart, inspect it, see if it needs to be replaced. That can be a failure item on this, uh, on this unit. Rest of the clutch is pretty much the same. Planetaries, <clears throat> we've got more that we can take apart on this unit here. There's another snap ring here that holds this rear planetary section together. So we can take that, we can take out the remaining planetaries. We're going to check and inspect all of our thrust bearings and our usual inspection of all the planetary gears. We want to check side to side movement. We want to check, make sure they don't wobble on the pin. And we want to make sure that our pocket screwdriver, our pick is not going to catch on any of the surface down, down low here. We're not looking at the edge of the gear itself. We're looking down here in the middle of the, the gears themselves. Most of the RFEs, generally speaking, planetaries and so forth are not an issue. These are built big and beefy. They don't tend to break unless the thing has just com been completely abused or run out of, of uh, fluid or something to that effect. So we'll do all the usual inspection on that. Um, center support, we'd take that apart. There's another bonded piston. This guy right here would need to be replaced. Um, what else? Our clutch hubs. When we were taking this input drum apart, I mentioned before how several of these clutches were burn up pretty bad. These pressure plates have been overheated, discolored from the excessive heat. That would be a pressure plate that I would automatically replace during the overhaul because of possible warpage. We would have to lay a straight edge across it, but I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to show, show the warpage. The other ones with the real light hot spots, there was one of these, we had a little hot spot right there. That's probably going to be okay. We could probably resurface that and, uh, and reuse it. And then the hubs, we do want to be looking at those close because of how bad these clutches are warped and bowed and stuck on there. And that is, is still stuck on that hub itself. Those should be moving, obviously, freely across that hub. So we knock those clutches off and then we would inspect the splines here where those clutches ride to make sure we don't have a deep groove. Our new frictions would need to slide over that hub freely and not bind on there. Otherwise, we just replace the uh, hub itself. The torque converter, of course, we're going to replace that, have that rebuilt and or upgraded, billet or otherwise as necessary. Uh, rest of the electrical. Our line pressure sensor, which bolts to the outside of the case, I mentioned is a high failure item. That is just going to get replaced along with the two speed sensors. Not that expensive. Uh, we, just, we just do that while we're there. Uh, I think we've pretty well covered everything here. Um, like I said, this is, could be a uh, very interesting unit to build. Um, happy to do a video on that if you guys show enough interest. Um, we'll show you some of the upgrades as much as we can anyway, and uh, any of the updates that are available from aftermarket or, uh, or from uh, factory itself. So. This show is a ton of hours to produce, and we could use your support. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So we just uh, got done doing the inspection video. To back up a little bit, we previously did the teardown video, but we could keep going and do a full-blown build series on this transmission. It's just a matter of there being enough interest in order for us to do that kind of a video series. So if that's you and you wanna see a full-blown build series on the 68 RFE, drop us a line in the comment section down below. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert and I will see you next time.